The Kentucky Wildcats, one of the best traveling fandoms in all of sport, coming in to watch their beloved basketball team. They'll take on the Iowa Hawkeyes in our second semifinal of the Guardians Classic tonight, coming to you from the Municipal Auditorium here in Kansas City. Both teams unbeaten. And earlier tonight, of course, in dramatic fashion, the second-ranked Texas Longhorns rallied to win it over a game West Virginia team. Mike Gansey put up 28 points. But in the end, watch LaMarcus Aldridge. 14 rebounds, 15 points. That put him ahead. Then he came back with the block at the other end and a 76-75 win by the Longhorns. And now the Horns advance to the final and they await the winner of the second game coming up, Kentucky, Iowa. The losers, incidentally, West Virginia will play the loser of this game in a uh, consolation meeting tomorrow night. So, uh, Coach Lavin, we had just a fabulous first game here in Kansas City. What do we make of the second one now? Well, should be another spectacular game. Iowa, the Hawkeyes, coached by Steve Alford, a veteran team, Brent. Three seniors, two juniors, going against a Tubby Smith. Kentucky Wildcat team, very dangerous and young. Gonna get better as the year comes along. Should be a great matchup. All right. Our star watch for this second game. What a great guard matchup we've got uh, here, Coach. Uh, Rajon Rondo, of course, one of the best in the country. Single season record for steals. Then how about Jeff Horner? of Iowa, the only player in Hawkeye history with 1,000 points, 400 rebounds, and 400-plus assists. Let's check in now with uh, Aaron Andrews. And uh, Aaron uh, Rajan, he is simply one of the best. He certainly is, and he worked a lot during the offseason with assistant coach Dave Hobbs. They told me they really felt they needed to work from the beginning with his shot, if you can believe it. They wanted to work on his release and also the fact they didn't feel like he was leaving the floor when he would take a shot. So like I said, he worked with assistant coach Dave Hobbs. They said the test tonight will be to see how he holds up uh, under pressure and also to see if he remembers what he worked on in the offseason, guys. All right, Aaron, and as we look at the, uh, the starting lineups, this is a veteran team for Alford. His five starters that he finished up with last year. Horner, Haluska, Henderson, Bruner, and Big Hansen all on the floor. Now, Kentucky, would you agree with me that they are deeper than Iowa, but they do not have an established five? In fact, you can see that he's tinkered with the starting lineup here again tonight. Uh, Aline drawing his first start along with Sims. A dangerous Kentucky team, Brent. Still a work in progress. Something Tubby Smith enjoys building teams for the Southeastern Conference and ultimately for the postseason tournament. And then a veteran group on the other side, the Hawkeyes. Explosive, high-scoring machine. Be interesting to watch this contrast of styles. You are very fond of Bruner's game, and he's lost, uh, what is it, about 15 pounds uh, since the end of last season. But uh, he's a very, very fine all-around uh, basketball player. Cut back on the RB cheeseburgers. Lean and mean. Reminds me a lot of Dave Cowens, a double-double man, can step away from the basket, knock down shots a little bit quicker now because he's leaned his body down. A banger down low on the block. Reminds me also a little bit of Brian Cardinal, a more recent player, but he's more skilled than Cardinal, a little more fluid. Tubby Smith, of course, still playing without Randolph Morris. Uh, they have appealed to the NCAA, and uh, they're very hopeful that he can return. Tubby Smith's just simply one of the, uh, the best. And uh, works his way right down that line with the entire, his entire team. Fired the tip off here and controlled by the Wildcats. And here is Rondo. He is quick, long arms. You can see him quickly pick up the dribble, hit Sims as the JC transfer from Hanson was on him. Can't put it back. Crawford comes back. The young man from Michigan with the game's first field goal. You can see in the first possession, Brent, how quick this Kentucky Wildcat team is. Quick and deep. Sparks picks up Henderson. Here's Horner kicking it back now to Henderson. Attacks the paint from the corner. Bruner blocked. Rondo's over on. Now watch his footwork. And he gets the ball to Crawford. Rondo is simply one of the best in the country, and he is so graceful. And the big fella, Aline, Shigari Aline, the seven-foot-three-inch junior from the Bronx. 
Couldn't get the handle on the ball. Rajon Rondo, so quick out to block Ray Bruner's shot. Bruner 6'8", Rondo 6'1". That basketball player is reached, doesn't he, Coach? Great anticipation. Bruner's screening on him, and uh, Rondo back picked up the personal foul, so it goes against Rondo after the Bruner screen on him. Tubby Smith not afraid to play 9-10 players. You bring them in waves, keeps fresh bodies on the floor, tries to wear you out defensively over the course of the game. There's Bruner again attacking, puts that shoulder down, comes up. Crawford battle to the rebound. Henderson comes back with it. He's fouled and won. We're seeing the little guys go to work. Henderson, six foot two, down low with the big boys on a putback. Good body control. Rondo, six one, block and a six eight. Jump shot. As you look at the Big Ten and you see uh, Offord, who was a uh, great scorer with uh, Bob Knight, that last Indiana championship team in '87. But when you think of of the Big Ten, Michigan State is going to be the preseason favorite. Uh, there's a lot of talk about. Indiana, Killingsworth now active, having transferred from Auburn. White will come back. I rate Iowa one of the real sleepers because of this veteran lineup. The fact that they play so well together. Crawford missing on the right. And the Hawkeyes come back. No substitute for experience. Warner kicks it back now into Henderson. He was covered up on the inside. Back with a rhythm shot, catch and shoot, tap back by Hanson's good. Hanson's put on 10, 15 pounds in the offseason. You're starting to see some guns there in the biceps. Got some pipes going for himself now. Sparks catch and shoot. Great shooter. Hits the three ball for the Wildcats. Deadlock at five. Horner up with the short J and looked at Rondo sky and with that reach. Man, what a future he's got. Jackknife quickness on the glass. And Hanson picks up a foul. That's what he's got to stay out of for Alford, picking up those cheap fouls like that up on top. We've seen that throughout his career. Early foul trouble. You end up with the seven-footer, the aircraft carrier on the bench next to Coach Alford as an assistant. Can't help him there. transfer ships it back to Mullen. Tied here in the early going. The winner will meet Texas for the championship tomorrow night. Alaska sticks right with Sparks. Doesn't need much daylight. And the 2-2 two -two can put it up in a hurry for the Wildcats. Shot clock's going down inside 10. Sims on the attack. Hanson's got his second, and he's in early foul trouble, and that hurts the Hawkeyes right here. See his teammates talking to him about staying out of foul trouble, just being big. Just get the hands up. Don't get airborne like that. You want to stay flat as a seven-footer. Just get the hands straight up so you can stay in the game and help your team on the offensive end. Doug Thomas will replace him. Also to send him in the... Uh, the J.C. transfer from Pasadena, California, now a senior. This gives the Hawkeyes a different look. They're a little faster, a little quicker. They give away some size, but still very dangerously offensively when Thomas is in the game. And right away, uh, Tubby responds. Sheree Thomas, the junior from Montreal. In for the Cats. So with Hansen out, Tubby immediately goes a little bit smaller in a game of matchups here. Down screen, here comes Bruner, and that's going to be offense. Boy, for Kalen Sims, heads up play there, move his feet, give ground, and take that charge. Bruner turning, lowering the shoulder, just flooring him. Easy call on the baseline official there. Kirk Ferentz might like that move as a fullback, but it doesn't work. Earl Campbell <laughs> out of the backfield. 
Not in basketball, huh? Sparks was looking for daylight. Warner was there. Warner puts it down in the paint. And uh, our officiating crew, Larry Rose, Bernard Clinton, and Tom Eads, they're not letting them get away with anything here at the early going. Trying to establish the tone. Sims steps out with that left-handed shot and drains the three ball. 9-5, Kentucky. Kalen Sims, a nice looking junior college player. Tubby Smith and staff talked about he really understands how to play. Henderson, tap back, no. Kentucky comes out on the move. Here comes Rondo. We'll split the D and track it down. Sims again. Back-to-back -back threes for the J.C. transfer. You can see why they like Kalen Sims from De La Salle High School in the Bay Area, Brent. Through junior college to Kentucky. He's helping out on defense, burying jump shots. Drew the second foul on Hanson. He's had an impact since substituting. Heats on now, and Bruner comes back. That ends that 10-0 Kentucky run. Sparks, deep three. And the Hawks can put together field goals. Bruner's three, yes. Five unanswered now for Iowa, and it's a two-point game. Good find by Horner. Soft touch by Bruner. You saw that with Pitsnog. It's so tough when your big man can step away from the basket. Kick corner. Sims again. He's got another one. Oftentimes, it takes a junior college player half a season, sometimes even a full season, to really get acclimated to this level. And Caitlin Sims has made that transition at an accelerated pace. First start here tonight, Steve, and uh, he played a long ball with the Hawkeyes. On a cut, Haluska. Here's Rondo yanking down the rebound and puts it down with that great quickness of his. Good judgment there. Quick as a dart, but willing to bring it out and set his team up. Lost the dribble, turned it over. Spoke too early, Brent. Inside! And there's the feed to Thomas. So he's the JC player for the Hawkeyes. Three-point Kentucky lead. Sims takes his game inside. Not this time, Bruner yanks it down. Again, Bruner. Henderson battling for the rebound. Sparks taps it over now to Rondo. Spinning move by Crawford. Comes back, forcing it. A good offensive rebound. Gets away, ball, swatted back outside, Thomas. And Tubby Smith goes deep into the bench. That was some battle in underneath. What a pace. It's 15-12, Kentucky leads it. We've got a timeout in Kansas City. ESPN2's exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by Lowe's. For all your home improvement needs, Lowe's, where improving home improvement never ends. Well, what a feast week. Here at the Guardians Classic, second of our semifinals, Kentucky leading Iowa 15-12, and then Feast Week presented by Lowe's on the ESPN Family and Networks continues later tonight right here on ESPN2. That's a dandy. Arkansas against the third-ranked team in the country, the Connecticut Huskies, and at 11.30 Eastern. We may be up late tonight, Coach, watching hoops, man. A little barbecue to go. Back to the room. Watching some good hoops. Hey, Rudy Gay's pretty good, isn't he? Freshman of the year, the Big East. He's one of the uh, preseason All-Americans. Well, Josh Boone and Rudy Gay are going to have to carry things from UConn early until Marcus Williams comes back into the fold in time for Big East Conference play in January. 
Well, we see Bobby Perry taking the ball out of bounds. Ramel Bradley has also checked in. Tubby now going deep to his bench. We talked about it. Carter's also on the floor. We talked about how we thought this Kentucky team was much deeper than Iowa, and Tubby's going to uh, going to go into that bench right now. And Perry trying to get inside of Alaska. And the foul is called on him. And, uh, you know, at some point, these guys have got to let him play. i got to tell you that. I thought the first game was really well officiated. It's a very, very fine line that, that you walk in by trying to establish discipline and letting guys play a little bit. And I'm, I don't want to be critical of anybody in particular, but uh, but this one's got the earmarks of being a little, little too tight right now. You know, coaches keep track officials calls and they chart handicap officials so they can make the adjustments with their team going into a game even through the flow of the game. Sweet by Carter. Tap in's good. And no, it's waved off. Cylinder interference. Ball was up on the cylinder. So no basket. It's always interesting to see talking about officials of different crews, just like in baseball. One official's crew in baseball called the strike zone a little bit different than another, and you have to make that adjustment as a coach or a player. Yeah, and it, it drives players nuts when the inconsistency drops in. Let me tell you. How do you really feel, Brent? You haven't made to Christmas. You haven't even broke bread at Thanksgiving without any of the officials. I thought Hank Nichols said, back off. Back off, my guys. Head pass it. Then is going to track it down now. Puts it down with a drive and uh, foul on Kentucky. Nice change of pace by Henderson. Then the explosion. So critical in basketball. Changing speeds, changing tempos. You see the little hesitation move. He sees the blue C open up, takes it into the seam, gets himself to the foul line. Got him with the body, didn't he, as we, as we watch that replay. Pulls the Hawks to within two. Not too often you can take a ball uncontested against Kentucky to the basket. W. Smith's kids, so strong in the basket area, so tough. No easy looks inside against the Wildcats. Very rebounds. I look over there at all the uh, the blue sweaters, blue shirts. What a great basketball program they've had through the decades over at Kentucky. And, uh, some of the greatest fans you ever want to be around traveling here for this uh, Thanksgiving holiday classic in Kansas City. Guardians classic. The winner, of course, will take Texas and uh, not away from the ball. Bradley pushing it off. And uh, Fox go back to the bench. And young Tony Freeman, whose uh, father played over at Indiana. Young man's out of the uh, Chicago area. Played at Maywood, Illinois. Number 11 for the Hawkeyes. Checks in, and it's a, a two-point game. There is Young Freeman. We're seeing Kentucky here. Was cut by Horner. Well, there are a lot of whistles. Fifteen, thirteen. <laughs> the coach agrees with me. The first time this year. Timeout. Boy, here it's 15-13, Kentucky leading Iowa. And you know, during the course of the season, the ESPN family of networks are going to be showcasing a great basketball moment from all 326 Division I schools. So that countdown is going to take us uh, from A to Z. And it is time now for ESPNU's Pride of the Program. Tonight in the spotlight, Arkansas State. In Stanford, the headlines called them Anonymous State. But it was a team Cardinal fans wouldn't soon forget. The Hawkeyes' Ron Jackson won the game from the foul line with no time left. Arkansas State's greatest win, and certainly anonymous no longer. Every school uh, writes a headline uh, in, their, uh, in their basketball history, and we'll be hearing from every one of them before the, uh, the season ends. And I see that uh, Coach Smith has gone back to his starts. Well, we see Coach Smith substituting often, liberally. That's part of the collective or collaborative effort he expects out of his team to try and cumulatively wear down opponents. 
missed the last six shots. And uh, there's a uh, strong rebound by Alex Thompson. And here comes Crawford. Bondo wide open. He's been working on that shot. Not there. Bruner screens off. Aline. Great. Oh, they couldn't finish on the pass. Sims comes back now. Sparks off the dribble and wanted it. Tap three by Thomas. Here's Freeman putting it down. Jump past of Thomas who finishes. Nice pass. Good recognition by Young Freeman. Classic jump stop at the free throw line. Does Coach Wooden's part good when he sees that happen. The old Mike Warren jump stop at the elbow. Give it up. 45 degree angle for the layup. There's Sims. He's had the... Uh, the hot hand for the uh, Wildcats here tonight. He's got a dozen. So 12 of their 17 points have scored by the Kalen Sims. Bruner in low, hits the cutter, and finish, and the Wildcats come back. Good interior post passing by Iowa. Just couldn't finish. It. Freeman into Sims' hands. You see why Coach Alford likes Freeman. He gives him a good change of pace in terms of speed coming off the bench, provide a spark for the Hawkeyes this year. Another ball handler gives Steve Alford some flexibility with lineups. Little 2-3 zone by the Hawkeyes. See if Kentucky recognizes. And into Horner's hands. Inside of 10 minutes left here in the opening half. Coach Smith not happy with that shot against the 2-3 zone. You don't want to settle. No standstill jumpers. Try and get something into the gap. Get a flash behind the zone. Get some dribble penetration. Play draw and kick. And Bruner's on the free throw line. Three more subs coming in <laughs> for the Wildcats. <laughs> Wholesale substitution style here. Kentucky searching for the lineup. Uh, suddenly Kentucky struggling from the field in the last few minutes. Aluska. Returns for the uh, for the hot guys. And, uh, they're six of 19. Kentucky. Luska replaces Thomas. Hanson saddled with two early fouls in the game. Sits for Iowa. Here's Bruner. Stolen. Bondo. Luska cut him off. Perry back off the bench again. Sims stays on the floor. He's carried the offense here tonight for the Cats. They go back to Orlando and uh, Freeman cutting him off. All of Rondo's abilities and talents and skills on display is they confident enough to throw a six foot one point guard a lob to the rim. We've seen him block a shot earlier in the game. Picking off passes. Cat quick. He will pick your pocket. Steal your bread. You don't protect the ball. And Sims scoring at will here tonight. Just carrying the load for him with 14. Well, I can't emphasize enough that the Kentucky Wildcats staff is so high on Sims. We talked about how fluid he is, how easy it is for him to score, understanding the game. Corner responds with the three ball. Out beyond that new three-point arc. Rondo puts it down, gets to the left hand, tap back for the loose ball. Rondo ships it aside, and a foul against Iowa. So we mentioned that uh, that new three-point line, and they have moved it back a, uh, a foot. And it's 20 feet 9 inches. There is an arc that protects a driver underneath, like the NBA, and the free throw lane, two feet wider. Steve Alford telling me he likes all the rule changes, but he said you got to use them all together. One of the problems has been for the women 
when they extend the three point. So the difference here in the experimental rules is that the women can step on the line and it will be about twice as large as the one now. The men still have to be behind it for it to count. And of course, Steve offered uh, one of the great three point shooters. And also, he came here as a youngster. In the uh, in the third grade in a free throw contest, and uh, I know Aaron Andrews has got that story. It's a uh, it's a delight, and uh, Steve Alford, uh, growing up, was one of the great shooters in the state of Indiana. Bruner down with the miss. Steve Alford, one of the great shooting strokes in the history of college basketball. A little wet spot on the floor. We talked about Rick Mount, Jerry West, but Steve Alford's technique in terms of elbow lift, his footwork, his shot preparation. Of course, Bob Knight. Had those screeners and blockers free and offered up for wide open looks all over the floor. Big Horner has a shot very similar to Alford. Of course, Horner benefiting from having Coach Alford as a shooting instructor every day in practice. But great fingertip release. Here's Bruno. Zone defense by Kentucky, but it's an active zone, not a passive zone. Traveling on Thompson. 2018. Kentucky leads it by two. They force the turnover, and we come back. Steve Alford, the young free throw contestant. Aaron will have that story next. for the Guardians Classic. Well, as Brent mentioned earlier, Iowa head coach Steve Alford has a lot of memories inside of this arena. We talked about all the history that's gone on here. Steve Alford was in a free throw contest, a national free throw contest, when he was in third grade back in 1974. Earlier, he told us what it was like for him here. Well, it was my first flight. Uh, I'd never been on an airplane before, so it was a great trip for our family to be able to come spend a, a weekend in Kansas City, a part of the Elks Hoop Shoot, uh, that I'd, I'd advanced all the way to the national tournament and um, got here as a 10-year-old and uh, ended up making, I think, 22 out of 25, and that wasn't good enough. Uh, a guy from Oregon beat me, and I just... The only real impression I got of this building is the picture. Uh, they took a group picture of the 10, 11, 12, 13 year olds and uh, pretty much everybody smiling but one kid. And it, uh, I had a pretty good pout going on on the floor after not winning the thing because I came here wanting to win the thing. Well, we heard all about that pout yesterday from Steve Alford's father. We don't know who that Oregon guy is, but Brent, we know that there was another famous guy that lost in that national free throw shooting contest here. Yeah, exactly. Uh, Chris Mullen didn't get it done. Maybe Gary Payton. No, he'd be too young. I was thinking of great, great players from, uh, from Oregon. Perry steps out, rattles out, and Kentucky keeps it alive. Kentucky gives up a little bit of size in this lineup, but not quickness. He's not on the boards on the speed, but... Moss nails the three ball, Steve. Yep. A lot of combinations, a lot of flexibility that the Kentucky Wildcats have. Multiple substitutions. Hawkeyes are struggling from the field. Less than 40% shooting now so far. Thompson missing. Boy, when Big Hansen gets into early foul trouble. It uh, really hurts off it down low. Bruner with the turnover. Sticking with Freeman in the backcourt, along with Henderson. Arizona Haluska. Freeman with that quickness gives it back. And a foul is called. So we are in Kansas City, the second of our two semifinals. The first game of the Guardians Classic here tonight was won by Texas in dramatic fashion as West Virginia missed three critical field goals in the closing seconds of this game, giving Texas a life, and they took advantage of it. Aldridge with a tap in, then a defensive block. West Virginia will go to sleep tonight uh, thinking about the missed free throws. They had the upset in hand. Could not finish. Here is Warner for the Hawks. Give it back down to Haluska. Haluska attacks. And foul called. He got into the arc. 
And once you're into that arc, you've got to let him get to the rim. Nice bounce by Haluska to the rim. You see the shot fake, lifts the defender. They have traveled out front. But nice put down. It was just outside the, off the bank. Did Steve? I mean, he had stepped actually above it. Haluska adds the free throw. It's early. Everyone's game's a little bit rusty. Officials are capable of being rusty at times. Coaches sometimes. Players. Everyone can have an off night. Trying to find their rhythm or flow. They're a team. Officials just like a basketball team. Almost regains it. To the corner. Saved it. Ten on the shot. And hooked it against him as he dribbled out. Play with Steve Alford is one at every level, Brent. Manchester College, a Division III National Championship. Southwest Missouri State took them to a Sweet 16. He's taken Iowa to multiple NCAA tournaments. Obviously, he's a player, an NIT championship, an NCAA championship, a gold medal. His pedigree, his resume, very impressive. A body of work in basketball. There's Thomas as the Hawkeyes attack and gain a tie at the five-minute mark. For the Hawkeyes, yanks it away. But Doug Thomas pulled down a rebound, opens Thompson, lead Iowa. Heads up play. Talked about it in the first game, Brent. The pass is quicker than the dribble. Advancing with the pass. Sims for the three. No, not this time. Tracked down by Moss, and he's out of bounds. Hawkeye basketball. Tubby goes back to the bench. Rondo returns, and uh, the appearance of Wukash Orbschut, who had started the first two games, the seven-footer from Poland who went to a prep school in Maine, he's on the floor for the first time. Orbschut, number 10. And on the inside, Blocking foul away for the basketball against the Hawkeyes. Let me see, Steve. What do we got? Nine against Kentucky and uh, what about eight against Iowa here in the, in the first half? Must be hiccups. A lot of whistles. You called that out, Brent. That's called forecasting. Trying to give you some credit. Hawkeyes on a 7-0 run. It's a parade of whistles. You may not have anybody left. Take some of these Hawkeye and Wildcat fans out of the stands, put some jerseys on them, let them scrimmage to finish the game. <laughs> At this rate, <laughs> coaching staffs might be out there. Alford against Tubby. Here's Sparks. There's the Hawkeye sub right there. He's ready, Looks man. like a, a power forward. Yeah, Maybe there. Dennis Rodman. Yeah, yeah. He's the Rodman of <laughs> Hawkeyes. Free spirit. Got to appreciate that. Their football team, of course, will be headed to a bowl game. And uh, miss second free throw, Hawkeye. He's ready for the Wildcats, too. Man, there's some intense, intense yeah. fans down that way. Got the Adolf, Adolf Rupp stare there. Intense. Three from Hunter. Long with the Hunter's got it. Sparks wide open. Dead it. Well, we're seeing some sharpshooters on the floor here. Sparks, great rotation, follow through on a catch and shoot. We've seen Horner earlier tonight knock one down. You gotta find him when he spots up. Luska back the other side for the three. And it's 28-27, Hawkeyes, three and a half minutes. And a shootout in Kansas City. Hot sauce. Inside, and Wu, as he is known by his teammates, slams it home. Orb shoot. 
I've been wanting to say that name. You got pit snoggle, but I got orb shoot. <laughs> Very good, coach. Thanks to the SIDs, not the fanatics. Henderson off the fake. That's a two. With the experimental rule, a two instead of a three. Bloomer getting ready to check back in. Harry picks the dribble up into the corner and sparks travel. Corner kicking it into Thompson for the Hawkeye lead. But at the other end, the spot-up shooter, Sparks. A good one. Our second semifinal. The winner draws Texas. So Iowa leads at 30-29, uh, despite Patrick Sparks' long-range shooting. Another case of a Kentucky boy overcoming the odds, Richie Farmer. He was supposed to be too small and too play. And uh, one of the most popular ever. Then there was Travis Ford, transferred back home from Missouri. He became a fan favorite, ran Rick Patino's offense. Now the head coach at UMass. And of course, here is Sparks, transfer from Western Kentucky. He's earned his stripes thanks to big performances. I will ever forget uh, that NCAA tournament sending the Michigan State game on into overtime. So Sparks with seven. He's hit uh, two three balls here. And the Hawkeyes coming back down. <laughs> Seth Gorney, seven foot sophomore from uh, Vandalia, Ohio, on the floor for the first time for Iowa here tonight. Bruner pulls the trigger, and Rondo. He's an outstanding rebounding guard. He really gets to the glass and skies. Set him up at the other end, drew the foul. Perry's on the free throw line. Rondo gets the ball from point A to point B as quick as anybody in the country and then makes good decisions when he gets into the paint. Puts such pressure on defenses. Good moving screen there by Orb shoot. And then the fine by Rondo. Steve, do you think that someone like Daniel Gibson of Texas can watch someone like Rondo and, uh, and pick up a few things about running the floor? Oh, absolutely. The subtleties, just like in football, the subtleties of a quarterback, the reads, the poise, understanding your system. Same thing in basketball. Five ties, eight lead changes. Line. Tough shot. Moss rebounds for the Cats. And with Rondo again. Cross to Sparks. Spot. Off this time. Tap back. And uh, foul is going to be called. Kentucky tenacious on the glass. Second efforts. Trying to keep the ball alive. That time over the back. Both teams in the bonus. Iowa now the double bonus will shoot two for the rest of the half. 145 and uh, Bruner step into the line. It is clear here in the early season that uh, Tubby Smith is, is looking for the five that he wants to put together. You know, he's trying to find the right chemistry, the right blend of his players. Yeah, we've seen him do this before, very yes, effectively. Rotating 9, 10, 11 players. Not afraid to put walk-ons in the game. Keeps his team hungry, playing with a hard edge. Ne no one ever gets complacent. Not a country club environment. Kentucky's not the school to go to if you want to be in the game for 40 minutes. Yeah, yeah but, but, but tough love. You know, he'll work your hard in practice, but, uh, but he cares for the players that come through the program. Won an NCAA championship in his first year down there at uh, Bluegrass Country. Made the NCAA tournament every year. Turned it over. There's a point of emphasis. Another whistle. Ball goes out of bounds. But of course, you know, the Wildcat fans 
Well, they're like UCLA fans, if I could, a little bit spoiled. And they, they wondered, yo, tell me, when are you going to win another one? I mean, that's... Yankee fans, Notre Dame yeah, football right, fans, right. UCLA basketball fans, that's SC and football is that way. All you got to do is win every game like Pete Carroll. Just win 34 <laughs> in a row. The alumni will be happy. That's amazing, isn't it? Look, Boosters will dump the money in the coffers. Alaska short. Ando skies for still another rebound. And puts it on the floor quickly. Cannot turn your back on him when he comes up. Perry's off. Rebound Thomas. Down to the last minute here. One point game. Head pass. Henderson's got it. Well, this is a relentless tempo which could favor Kentucky late in the game because they go 9-10 deep. Heavy minutes for the Hawkeyes in their starting five. The interesting to watch the last three, four minutes of the ball game, the fatigue becomes a factor. Loki steps out on quickly to the corner and Moss in and out. Kentucky had the three. One shot and a timeout for Coach Alford. So the veteran Hawkeye team hanging in there right now, and they lead it 34-31. Last shot time coming up when we come back. All right, coming up on the halftime report, it's the Davis gang with Coach Fran Gonzaga prevailing over Maryland in uh, Texas, pulling it out against West Virginia, and uh, we'll have an update from Maui. So that'll all be, uh, be ahead of us. If you missed the end of the uh, Texas-West Virginia game, uh, the fellows will have some of the highlights of that. Longhorns win it in the winter. And they start young down there in bluegrass country, too, man. 34-31. I'd expect a two-man game coming out of this timeout involving Bruner and Horner. Hawkeyes have multiple options, but I would expect a two-man game involving Bruner. He's got it right now, Coach. Picked up his five dribble. seconds. Horner's got it down to three now. Tried to come through, forced one, and he traveled. The most traveling calls I've seen in a long time in one game. I think they all need to go to the Pete Newell footwork camp. Long pass. Didn't touch anything. Goes out of bounds under. It goes all the way back. Iowa gets a quick hitter play along the baseline here. Oh, what a here. break that is for the Hawks. Could be a lob play or a little duck-in move underneath the basket. Lob to the rim. Little interior screen here. Maybe a lob to the front of the rim. Little tap. Fired. At the buzzer. Had a shot. So Alford and the Hawks with a three-point lead, 34-31. Play a little ragged at times. And Sims keeping Kentucky in it with his shooting. And let's check in now with Aaron. Oh, stop. He's complaining that I'm talking to the losing guy. I know you've been emphasizing execution to your guys in the huddles. With the shootout, what do you emphasize about defensive stop? I'm sorry. How do you create a defensive stop here against this Iowa team that's shooting so well? Well, we've had a lot of breakdowns. Transition defense is what's killed us tonight. We, we were not getting back. Nobody's picking up the ball. Nobody's talking the transition. That's where they're getting most of the points, I think. And uh, although they made some threes, we made some defensive breakdowns. Um, didn't handle the screens properly. They, so we we're trying to make some adjustments at halftime. All right, thanks, coach. All right, Aaron. And uh, again, Iowa leads it 34-31. And uh, let's go to the studio now. The Davis game with Coach Fran. Take it away, Reese. All right, Brent, three-point lead for the Hawkeyes at the break. And uh, you know Tubby Smith is going to make some defensive adjustments. He always does, or, or else guys will be sitting beside him and not playing. <laughs> but what about the offensive adjustments you'd like to see the Cats make, Hubert? Yeah, I think uh, Kentucky's been doing a good job offensively, particularly uh, Patrick Sparks. He really struggled at the beginning. Uh, his first two games averaging five points tonight, he already has seven points in the first half. So they need him to continue shooting the ball well if they're going to have a chance to win tonight. And by the way, uh, Tubby Smith didn't look like he was in a holiday spirit right there. But, but, but another key for Kentucky is Rekalen Sims. And they don't take a lot of Juco guys. This guy's got 14 at the half. He was well coached in junior college and in high school. And uh, he is uh, going to be a big lift without Randolph Morris early part of this year. Yeah, still waiting on Randolph Morris. Sims has shot the ball very well in the first half. Talk some more hoops in just a little while. But first, 
Detroit Red Wings defenseman Yuri Fisher collapsed during a game against the Predators tonight. Red Wings were playing the Predators late in the first period and Fisher had to have CPR administered to him and also a defibrillator used. He has been taken to a hospital where he's now listed in stable condition and a spokesperson for the Red Wings says it appears that Fisher is going to be fine. It was about three years ago that Fisher discovered that he did have a heart abnormality. At this point, it's difficult to determine whether that played a role in the seizure that Fisher suffered. The rest of the game between the Red Wings and the Predators was postponed until a later date. Donovan McNabb appears to be done for the season. He likes to have surgery on that troublesome sports hernia. Peter Gammons reporting that the Red Sox and Marlins close to a deal that would send Josh Beckett and Mike Lowell to Boston in exchange for shortstop Hanley Ramirez, young prospect and another top pitcher out of the Red Sox minor league organization. Penn State, number three in the latest BCS standings. No guarantee they will stay there, however, but at the moment, Joe Puss team, best among the one loss crew. Back with more after this. ESPN 2's exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by Nissan, who reminds you to shift the way you move through the world. And Wendy's. Don't compromise, personalize. Do a Wendy's hamburger. Do what tastes right. ESPN 2's exclusive presentation of college basketball brought to you by PlayStation 2. Live in your world, play in ours. And your neighborhood Ace Hardware, the helpful place. Back in Kansas City, it's, it's rather interesting when you consider all the history of the Wildcats and all of the Final Fours that have been played here in Kansas City. You realize, Coach, that this is the first time that Kentucky has ever played a basketball game in this city. I, I found that so hard to believe when I... Uh, when I saw I your in. research in the media yeah, guy and the, all the <laughs> press releases. That's impressive. You dug that out, Brent. Yeah. Now, what do you what do you make of uh, what we've got here? Well, I'll tell you, Iowa, you can see their experience paying off. They're a little more fluid offensively at this stage of the season, but Kentucky, Tubby Smith, I think he likes the tempo right now, playing 10 deep, up and down. That could favor the Wildcats late in this game if fatigue becomes a factor. Tubby doesn't mind the game being a little bit ugly sometimes they're plus eight in the boards that's where they want to get work done is in the paint and our MasterCard first half stats note down in the bottom the Hawkeyes despite the fact that Eric Hansen left with those two fouls have outscored Kentucky by 10 points in the paint in fact when you look at Kentucky's offense only 10 field goals in the first half where Sims had half of the output he was five of 11 and off Sparks foot so it will be Hawkeye's ball uh, out of bounds looking at uh, the Hawkeye attack a little more balanced for coach uh, Steve Alford uh, Mike Henderson played well he was three of four in the first half Adam Aluska was two of four Greg Bruner was two of five so a little more balanced scoring for the uh, veteran Hawkeye team and we'll see how the uh, Wildcats respond to that. Here's Warner the uh, fine point guard for the Hawkeyes Hanson back on the floor Bruner couldn't put it away and here comes Rondo back to Rondo from Sparks off Sims hands but uh, right hand right spot for the Cats Stepping out is Sims again, and there's his sixth field goal of the night. That locks it. For a silky smooth transition from the junior college ranks to the major college level. This is the highest level of college basketball. So poised. Off a of fake, and Sims hooked him in. Uh, Aaron, uh, what did uh, Coach Alford have to say uh, during that intermission when he came out? Brent, he was actually pretty pleased with his group. He thought they competed very well, nice job of fighting, but he said the one thing that his team did that a lot of teams do when they go up against Kentucky, they were a little anxious because they were a little intimidated by what was across Kentucky's chest. He said in the second half, what's key is board play. And he said Jeff Warner, Adam Luska has to do a better job with that. They didn't so much in the first half, guys. Yeah, exactly. And uh, Henderson on the free throw line. You know, he's a nice looking player. He's improved his game, uh, Henderson has. Yep, a complimentary player up to this point in his career and now trying to step in, become one of the regulars, a starter, a go-to, a real threat on the floor. I'll tell you, Holuska made a nice pass there, curling in the lane, a good dump off to Henderson, who's comfortable around the basket for six foot two. He doesn't mind working among the trees down low. Alford may have done his best job of coaching last year. Uh, 
Pierre Pierce's star kicked off the team in February. And this Hawkeye team had to regroup. They won their final three games of the regular season of the Big Ten, two games in the tournament, and got that final bid in the NCAA. Then they were uh, they were knocked out uh, early. But uh, he, he managed to regroup with this despite the absence of their uh, their star. Sometimes less is more with the team. Coach always wants to have good personnel. Nice block by Hanson. He just stayed on the ground that time. Brent put his hands up and the ball was shot right into it. Pick up a block just by putting your hands up. So Coach Hoffman did a nice job. Less with more. Created a really cohesive team that returns five this year in the starting lineup. <laughs> and it goes over. Well, you take a look at uh, at Steve Alford, and uh, there certainly has been criticism of him, and uh, the record uh, speaks for itself. But a year ago, they did wind up uh, 21 and 12, and uh, I think the constituency wants him to play a little bit deeper into the tournament this year. They they look like a solid candidate, barring injuries. And there's Hanson popping up, and uh, that's number three. And so he'll be replaced as uh, Thomas checks in from the sideline. And now uh, Hanson will sit with, uh, with three fouls. The reality today, Brent, is any major college program in a power conference that goes two consecutive years in basketball without making a run to the NCAA tournament, that coach is going to receive some criticism. With the 24-hour sports news cycle, chat rooms, talk radio, that's just the way it is. That's all part of uh, being part of uh, big entertainment. And, uh, you know, the, the last Big Ten championship for Iowa, that was back in 1979. And every school in the conference except Northwestern and Penn State, which didn't join the conference until the 90s, has won a uh, Big Ten championship since then. Very little patience. What have you done for me lately? That's the mentality that's pervasive in college athletics. Big, big business. Not to mention the pro level. <laughs> Revenue and results. That's it. Fill the seats. In low to Bruner and Ork. Juke was over there uh, on him. How'd you say say that name for me again? Or, let me get that one down. <laughs> well, I love the hear. first name too. Wukash Orb Shoot. That a boy. <laughs> You're my Orb Shoot guy, okay? <laughs> if he plays well, they'll name a thoroughbred after him. You get down to Claiborne, they'll name Orb Shoot. Seven footer. This is the free throw. See more and more international players have an effect on the college game in the U.S. This is the free throw line. If Rondo was a good perimeter shooter, he'd be all world. You know that? He's got great hands. I hope at some point we get a close-up of his hands. Oscar Robinson, Magic Johnson, size hands. Yet he's only six foot one. A little more common for six eight, six nine. He's got huge vice grips, like two catcher ones. Two Thurman Munson. He understands him. Moss gets the shot clock off the iron. Bruner yanks it down. Henderson on the drive. Thomas jump hook. The Hawkeyes stick with it. It's off Bruner. Foul call. Tubby Smith not happy with his team's effort on the boards. Granted, other than Orb shoot, it's a small lineup out there. The guards can get down in and rebound. Have to use their quickness and position anticipation instead of their size. And again the Hawks come back and Bruner scores. Lead and at the other end, Sparks missing. There's Old Juke. Henderson finally. One field goal in the last seven and a half minutes. Henderson to the paint. This is where Randolph Morris, if he were to rejoin the team, would be so critical to Kentucky's success. Someone you could throw the ball to, who can make a post move and get an easy deuce. Luster misfiring. Whips it inside a beautiful pass that time to Perry. 
You know who Rondo reminds me a little bit of, Brent? The old Stanford Cardinal, Brevin Knight. Yeah, I remember Brevin, that sure. dark quickness, sees people up the floor, good handle. Almost scored. Brevin struggled a little bit from the perimeter times in his career as well. Inside now to Bruner. He's carrying the load down in the paint. So tough. Nice job using his shoulders to make himself big. A little windy. He got his hands on his shorts. You see a couple of the Hawkeyes with hands on their shorts right now. Both coaches get ready to go to their bench. Very on a cut. Just the jump hook. Bruner. One hands it now, and Henderson attacks. Hardshoots releases, deflected, steal, drive, no. No foul call, Rondo on the dribble. Oluska tried to drive into him for the foul, Rondo at the other end, and whips it to Perry again. A jump ball is finally called after these guys came back down on the floor, banging into each other. I thought Perry's elbow was hit on that one. Got a boxing match and broke out in Kansas City. <laughs> Rope de dope. And uh, Bruner putting that one back in. And then there was that flick of that big mitt. And Terry finishing for the Cats. 40 36 timeout. Hey, that looks good over there at Bryant's. Answer this, Coach. Who's got better barbecue, Kansas City or Texas? I've got to go with Kansas City. Man, can you have some sent over there for Bryce ready for us when we leave? So critical. They've got the bread there to sop it up. Mm. We're going to grab some of that and a couple Byerly's sodas, maybe some orange sodas or Hires root beer or maybe <laughs> yeah, a knee-high right. blue soda and wash it down there, wet the whistle, huh? They know me better than that. <laughs> Arkansas and <laughs> the EA Sports Maui Invitational continues. It's Feast Week presented by Lowe's ESPN family of, uh, of networks. 11 of the top 20 going at it here this holiday weekend. Thomas back on the floor now for Kentucky. Sparks and Horner sticking right with him. And goes over. 14-29, Steve. It's 40-36. Alford's got the upper hand right now. That'll drive a coach crazy. Give Tubby Smith a couple more gray hairs. Patrick Sparks, you want a two-foot jump stop where you can reverse pivot and pass the ball back out. Going one way, passing the other. Not fundamentally sound. I thought you might want to hire root beer. I guess you want another beverage of choice, huh? <laughs> Over to Anderson on the right side. Great steal by Sparks. Going out of bounds. Asking for timeout. Got it. Well, he made up for the turnover. Tubby Smith has to like that. The crowd, the Hawkeye crowd, doesn't like it. I think they thought he had traveled before he called the timeout, but he got it, and we'll take a break. Hawks lead it by four. Uh, well, Kentucky trailing it, and uh, Coach 12 field goals, 13 turnovers, and uh, Sims has uh, simply carried the load for him here tonight. Well, from the Bay Area, De La Salle High School through Salt Lake Community College, good setup. Look at the base he has. The shot starts with the feet from the floor up. Gets squared to the basket, has high lift, not a perfect release, sometimes a little bit of a sideways or knuckleball, but because he's got good arch on it, very accurate. Just shifted in to uh, Bradley, who's on the floor. Thomas checks in for them. Crawford's back. Got to be searching for an offense down here, and uh, Sims is on the free throw line. Nice post feed by Bradley. And Kalen Sims again, working the baseline. That's a area there where you can get behind the defense, work the short corners on the baseline. Very crafty move by Sims. That's another example of him understanding how to play, having a good feel offensively, how to free himself up. Bradley's a good looking prospect from New York City. We've seen it with Carl Krauser, another New York City guard, Stephon Marbury, a lot of confidence and a swagger. Wildcat staff thinks he is gonna be a star. Henderson 
Backward pressure now being applied by the Wildcats. 1845. Freeman is up for the Hawkeyes. We'll be checking in. Luska gives it to a driving Thompson. He attacks. Alex Thompson, the second field goal of the night. Sims again. One man show. And shooter's touch. Got the carom, the roll. Looked a little bit like Adrian Dantley down there on the block. And uh, Balford's going to have to get Bruner back in the game on him. Well, the versatility inside and outside. It's all his skills on display tonight. Veluska put it down through the foul. Nice job of not rushing. Such a good screen. Good hands, seals his man off, doesn't rush, takes his time inside. So often players will quick shoot the ball instead of taking their time. If help comes, you can always kick the ball out. Up three, pointer back, handling the ball. Freeman's out there with him. Being very patient. Screen by Bruner on a pick and roll. Deep three rattles out. Kentucky. Iowa now has missed their last six three point shots. Oftentimes we're seen with fatigue late in the game on free throws and jump shots. Players start coming up short. Like the late rounds of a boxing match, the hands drop, that's when teams go for the knockout punch. Similar in basketball, the hands drop, the elbow doesn't extend, the follow through's not there. Foul on that shot. Count the basket. Steve can't believe it. Shot by Bradley, the New York City guard with the confidence, leaning, took the body hit, still finishes. Acrobatic midair, again, kissing it off the glass. The best friend is the square. Doesn't convert on the free throw. Iowa's trying to be deliberate or maybe conserve some energy here offensively. Henderson attacks. And he's on the free throw line. Not much movement, ball movement, or man movement on that possession, but bailed out with the foul. So we'll take a timeout. Iowa up by a point and shooting free throws when we come back. Kansas City, the Guardians Classic, the Final Four. It's Feast Week. It's presented by Lowe's on the ESPN family of networks. Earlier, Texas advancing. And they'll play the winner tomorrow night at 10 Eastern on ESPN2. And right now, the end of the second game very much up in the air. 11.50 to play. Henderson's on the free throw line for the Hawkeyes. He has 10 points tonight. Ian Bruner, the leading scorers for the Hawkeyes. Kentucky definitely stepping up the stingy defense in the second half. Much better effort holding the Hawkeyes to 23% here in the second half from the field. Rondo and Perry. Moss back. Thomas for the Cats and Bradley. 2-1-2 full court pressure by the Hawkeyes. Falling back into his zone, 1-2-2 zone. See the Hawkeyes get their hands up. When they're tired sometimes in the zone, they tend not to extend. 
with those hands up in the air against shooters. Low. Horner stays with it. And a pushing ball against the Hawkeyes as Perry went for the layup. John Thomas is second. And Perry will step to the free throw line. Gonna play his own defense. So important to get the hands up and don't allow the offense a free look. No window shopping over your defense. Even in the zone, you still have to have good ball pressure. Not allow Kentucky to be so comfortable in swinging the ball and probing the post. So Mel Bradley makes one point game. Tommy wanted that defense extended. Time to apply pressure. Kentucky ball, they can go for the lead. Rondo. Bradley fires for it. He's got it with the three ball. Kentucky leads it. Here comes the full court press. Blood in the water. The Sharks are there. Helter Skelter. Out of bounds. Hawkeye basketball. So against perhaps a little more tired team. Turning up the heat now. Kentucky's so fresh. Tuffy Smith loves to rotate players. Keep those fresh legs, fresh bodies coming at you the whole night. Then they hope to go on a spurt or a run. Throw that haymaker knockout punch. Freeman. And he traveled, turned it over. That's the run. We saw it during the Patino era. At times during Tubby's era, he's committed to the press, but he's made nice adjustments. Sometimes winning with zones, sometimes with a solid half-court man. Tonight, springing the full-court press on here in the second half. Hanson checks back in. 10-44, the Wildcats up by two. on the drive, blocked by Hanson, who just checked in off the bench. Freeman brings it down for the Hawkeyes, over the home of glass, and Hanson puts it in. Contributes at both ends of the floor off the bench. Nice job of Hanson with the ball up on the glass, attacking with the hands up. Ball goes up on the glass, big man got to get the hands up, just like Bobby ball. Two-hand put back. Perry regains the lead for the Wildcats. Final 10 minutes, regulation. Boy, Bradley, Rondo, and Moss, a nice combination. Interchangeable parts in the perimeter for Kentucky. All pass, catch, and shoot, but tremendous pressure on an opponent's defense. size. Rondo. Miss and Bruner yanks down the rebound. Deadlocked at 48. Bruner attacks the glass. Tapped by Haluska. Bruner again comes right back. Looks like Dan Issel out there. He's playing for the Hawkeyes. A horse. Bradley deep three. Perry's underneath, and he is fouled by Bruner from behind. He'll shoot a pair of free throws. Second game of the Guardians Classic. Final four. Texas has already advanced to tomorrow night's final. They will meet the winner. Kentucky from the SEC. Iowa from the Big Ten. For Steve Lavin and Aaron Andrews, I'm Brent Musburger. Nice to be with you here tonight. It has been a terrific uh, final four. All four teams came into the night, ranked in the uh, top 20. Bruner with 10 boards tonight. A yeoman's effort in the paint and on the glass. Now Sims returns to the floor for Kentucky. Perry. 
takes a seat. There's that Kentucky press. Bruner across, going to be stolen. There was Rondo. He anticipated, saw it. West does not have that outside shot. Aluska up the floor and out of Horner. Good choice by Horner. Sometimes you can conserve a little bit of energy. Just catch your breath offensively. Aluska off iron. Bradley gets it back from Rondo. He'll pull up the J. Yanking it down. Thomas, no. Still no. Finally cleared out by Bruner. And the foul goes against Bruner as he cleared out. Sims went down. It'd be interesting to see if Bruner was pivoting. He's entitled to that space if he's pivoting. If it's a flagrant with the elbow, then that was the correct call. Let's see if he's pivoting with the ball. Oh, he pivoted with it. That's where they got him coming back. Lower the shoulder with, on with the back a, end. The left shoulder. Trying to clear him out like an offensive guard. NBA scouts took note of that, however. <laughs> he is some tough hombre. Rondo puts it down on Young Freeman, and he turns it over. Iowa 50, Kentucky 49. We come down now to the uh, final eight minutes of regulation. Just a terrific doubleheader. The uh, first game went right down to the closing seconds. In and out for Horner. Goes to track it down to Rondo with those quick hands, comes away. Bradley off the dribble in on Hanson. Tap good. As Hanson had to back out, he didn't want to foul. You see in the fresh legs there, Kentucky getting back up off the floor once, twice, three times before Iowa gets off the floor. Hanson missed a little jump shot. Both teams fatigued here. I see a lot of players with their hands on their knees or shorts. Dead giveaway for fatigue. And timeout had been called before Moss took that shot. A lot of huffing and puffing. So the Hawkeyes with a two-point lead. And a reminder now that the EA Sports Maui Invitational, 1130 Eastern on ESPN2. Arkansas against Yukon as Feast Week presented by Lowe's continues here. Already they've had some terrific action over there at Maui, just like we have had here in Kansas City. There's your, uh, your bracket, Michigan State, Gonzaga, Ed Dancing, Arizona, and Kansas, to be followed by Arkansas and Connecticut. Rude Olson with another nice team in the desert. Will be another tough road trip through the desert. Both teams will be in the bonus, Brett, on the next foul. We'll see free throws, how it plays out in this game. We saw the difference it made in West Virginia's defeat. Good kick to the corner. Thomas missed into Henderson's hands. Kyle with the ball and up two. Out the way from a cutting horner. 
So we will take a, uh, a timeout here, Steve. And uh, we've had nine ties. We've had 13 lead changes. And we've had fine play at both ends of the floor. And young Freeman nailing the three ball. And the Hawks are up 53 51. I'm out. ESPN 2's exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by Lowe's for all your home improvement needs. Lowe's, where improving home improvement never ends. And Wendy's, don't compromise, personalize. Do a Wendy's hamburger, do what tastes right. Well, the Hawkeyes, coached by Steve Alford, lead it by two. Mom, dad, and his daughter are there in attendance. There's his father Sam he was a director of basketball operations for a while shouting encouragement down to the bench Steve's mom and uh, there's her granddaughter right to the left there so uh, he was a long time successful high school coach in the state of Indiana uh, he knows a lot about the history of basketball in that space Henderson on the attack a lot of bounds and it belongs to the Hawks with 14 on that shot over penetration there by Henderson. No daylight. Needs to sit down, kick that ball back out on the perimeter to an open teammate. Sam Kentucky. Alford, Newcastle High School. Yeah. Corner. Rimmed out into Sims' hands. That is remarkable. 17 rebounds. By John Rondo. And on the drive, lays it in his first basket of the night. Deadlocks it at 53, 524. His hands are so big. What an advantage as a basketball player. Strong hands and big hands. There they are again. You gotta get a close-up of those hands from the timeout. And there was a bumpy foul called on the attack. Let's take a look at Rondo now. Rajon Rondo gets into the paint with such ease. That's what reminds me a little bit of Brevin Knight. Lottery pick out of Stanford. Good body control, balance, a little teardrop. Over the top of defenders. There, uh, there's the Johnny Bench, Mitch. Look at those. That's caused some problems for him in terms of his shooting. When your hands are that big, we've seen that with Shaq. It's tougher to cradle the ball because you want to be able to cradle the ball in a soft way, like almost like an egg. Still How about get the good release? Steve, you made the 17 rebounds for a guard. Is, uh, remarkable. We've had 14 lead changes here tonight. Kentucky. Back ahead as we come down inside of five minutes. He is a dart on the floor. See his hands there? It's deflected. deflected. Look at those hands. Oscar Robinson. Magic Johnson. I'll tell you, it's Julius Irvin. Stretch him out, Dr. K. When the doc came down in that lane, man. It made it look like a grapefruit. Hold the tangerine. On a cut, Warner dishes it now, and Henson, left baseline, deadlocks it. Good job by our crew to get the hands. Rondo on the drive, and he's fouled. Tubby just spreading the floor offensively, putting the ball in his ball handler's hand, and letting them make plays. With good spacing, that's sound basketball. You see that in the NBA a lot. Run in isolation, take advantage of a player who has the skill and the gifts off of the bounce to create offense. And Bruner just picked up number four. That's a big number for the Hawkeyes because they need his physical presence down low. Try and isolate and go at him, not force, but probe and at least look for that matchup. Explore it. 
See if you can get his fifth foul and get him out of the game. Depth advantage, Kentucky. And Alford calls a timeout, brings Horner over. His point guard wants to talk about what he wants done out there. Remember now, Texas awaits the winner tomorrow night in our uh, championship game here. And we take you back. West Virginia led by Gansey's 28. Applied a lot of heat. But then Aldridge late in the game put it in. Then they got Gansey open. And Aldridge able to make the block. And Texas 76, West Virginia 75, 15 points in, 14 rebounds for Aldridge, who remember had to leave the team late last season because of that hip injury. And our winner tonight will meet Texas tomorrow night at 10 Eastern. Boy, I'll tell you, what an athletic program down at Texas. The Horns with a chance to win the football championship. And their basketball team came into tonight's game ranked number two. And Sims called for the foul. Coach Alford there with that timeout, Brent. I think trying to get his guys a little bit of a blow here. As they come down the stretch, they'll get another timeout inside of four minutes. So important when you're fatigued to focus on technique. Now that's four on Sims, and uh, Rondo had to calm him down when he jumped up like that, reminding him no time to pick up a technical right now. Well, that's an old soul for a sophomore, Rajon Rondo. He's going to be the security blanket for Tubby Smith from here on out. Similar to Chuck Hayes over the last four years, coaches always have a security blanket, an extension of themselves, someone that embodies their spirit on the floor that they can communicate with. It's Rajon Rondo for as long as he's at Kentucky. Tubby elects to take Sims out with these four fouls. Send Thomas in the game. Tip back now to Henderson. Deadlocked at 56 and the Hawkeyes possession. Bruner cut off by Thomas. Gets inside and one. A pushing foul is also called. Big play. A little two-man game. Nice maneuvering along the baseline by Greg Bruner. And they're going to get the timeout inside of four here. Critical stretch for the Hawkeyes. Timeout is called. Bruner has to be careful. He didn't want to pick up that fifth at that moment. You're done, fellas. All right, Reese, and uh, here Kentucky and Iowa win a good one. The Hawkeyes lead it by two, 3.55 to go. And let's go inside the play with Coach Lavin. Well, Fred, look at the little two-man game on this side of the floor. That's Haluska and Greg Bruner, your most skilled post player, your best, one of your best shooters. Little cat and mouse over here. Nice dump down. Look at the James Worthy, little negotiation, maneuvering, picks his dribble up, but manages to get out of trouble. Easy deuce for Mr. Bruner. Big bucket. What I like is that play was sandwiched around two timeouts. Iowa has to be feeling fresh after that blow coming out of the second timeout with the lead. Bruner 6-12, Steve, from the uh, field. Jeff Warner really struggled from the field. He's only one of ten tonight. And Adam Haluska, two of nine. Now, Rondo, as Bruner sits with four fouls, Rondo, 18 rebounds. That's his career high here tonight. Dishing it over to Bradley. Sparks, deadly shooter. Back now to Bradley. Outside to Thomas, and Hansen got a piece of it. I remember Hansen has been plagued by fouls tonight. He only has three, however, as he comes down the stretch as offered. Kept him over on the bench to protect him. So the guards have struggled shooting for Iowa. Bruner has carried the load offensively. He's sitting and uh, watching with four fouls right now at the 319 mark. Motion offense here, Brent, by Iowa. Good ball movement, good spacing. Bruner dishes to Hanson, and he travels. 
Iowa trying to get Greg Bruner a little bit of a blow. Won't be surprised if he doesn't get back in the game here in the next possession. 310 left. Hawkeyes up by three. Anderson stays right with Rondo. High screen for him. He's going to take it in for the 11. No. Perry underneath. And blocked by Hanson again. Loose ball. Battle on the floor. And a jump ball. And who has the possession there? It goes over to Iowa. Little rugby scrum. Both teams getting on the floor. Some knee burns. These games in November, Brent, as you know, become pivotal when you look at the body of work. The selection committee considers big wins late in the year. And Moss checks in for Kentucky, and Bruner returns. Four out. Number now, Bruner saddled with four personal fouls. 2.43 to go. Hawkeyes lead it. He'll take the ball out of bounds for the Hawks. Bring it across the timeline. Attack the left side. Keep the dribble stolen from him. And as Bradley tried to break out, Henderson is there. Foul called against the Hawkeyes. Both teams, of course, over the limit. Look, too much over dribbling by Horner. Surprising for a veteran. Heads up play, opportunistic. Wildcats all over that loose ball. So here is Bradley. He's missed his only free throw attempt here tonight. Amazing how often games come down to free throws. It's like the kicking game in football. Well, the first one certainly did. As West Virginia missed his last three on the front end when they could have upset Texas. Gave the Horns a chance. Nails him and makes us a one-point game, two and a half minute mark now. Kentucky extends that defense. Now he's got to get it up. And he's got to hurry. Did not give it up. They turn it over. There was a delay at the start of that sequence that put him in trouble right away, coach. Well, Kentucky springing on the press here in the second half. Iowa needs to do a better job of getting someone to the middle of the floor, the soft spot of that zone press, so they can attack it. Our guys have turned it over their last three possessions. A little dribble weave action. Down to the two-minute mark in regulation. Bradley lost it on the floor. Henderson's got it. Calls timeout. The Wildcats give it back. How many times have we seen players diving after loose balls? Rugby scrums. Shows the confidence that Tubby Smith has. Giving the ball to Bradley, a New York City point guard, to try and create. Just got a little bit carried away, a little too fancy. It led to the turnover. You know, Aaron, uh, now Bruner in a little bit better physical condition. Yeah, you mentioned that. I know Lab put in a little crack there about stop eating the Arby's. He actually said the secret to his success was he stopped eating fried and fast foods. He would go out to dinner and just pour salt all over his French fries. So he simply couldn't eat them. Lab, I think I need to do that when we go to lunch tomorrow. <laughs> Horner said he's still capable of ordering some pizzas late at night, though. After a game like this, he's, he deserves two large pizzas. He's earned it. 150 to go now. Henderson, Hanson, very well here with some big moments for him. Henderson's cut off. Get it back to Horner, and here is Henderson. They bring some time down, 59-58. Henderson, lane open on the attack. Yes, it's a three-point lead for Iowa. 128 now. It's a tough spot to hit. A little square that attaches the rim to the backboard. Found a dead spot, but rolled in for it. Perry 
He's open for the three. Ties it. 61 all. 105 to go. What a dandy doubleheader. Excellent pick and pop. What a good look. Henderson again. Got Bradley on the attack. Spins. Lane gets to the rim. No. At this time in Kentucky, he's got it. Battle for the ball. Rondo and, uh, stepped out of bounds. Hawkeye basketball. It's like an NCAA tournament game. Talk about spirited. Saw both games tonight, Brett. The resiliency, the punch, the counter punch, the fight, the pluck. Clearly exhibited. 44 seconds left in regulation. Fresh shot clock. Winner moves on to play Texas for the Guardians Championship. Iowa, last couple of possessions. Cut by Haluska to the rim, and he's on the free throw line. That was a nice curl. Using the screen by Hanson into the lane, able to draw the foul. And Sims is out. Raquelin Sims, the leading scorer for the Wildcats, just fouled out. 22 points on the night. Aluska at the line, Brent, last year, 80% free throw shooter. Iowa in that possession did a better job bringing Haluska, curling off of Hanson into the lane to get himself the foul line. Previous to that, they'd come up empty, just spreading the floor, trying to go too much one-on-one. -on -one. Remember a new uh, point of emphasis, and uh, there's a limited amount of time for a player who fouls out to leave, and Sims does just that. So now the, uh, the key will be exactly how Alford wants to uh, defend this after Haluska. 40 seconds left on the clock. Horner checking with his head coach. Already Bruner has retreated. to the opposite three-point line. And Haluska puts the Hawks up by one. There is Bruner. Remember, he's saddled with four fouls now. Missed the second one. Kentucky calls a timeout. It goes back. Tubby wants to keep going. Bradley attacks with it, and the follow Perry. No! Yanked away by Henderson. It didn't stay down. And Henderson will be shooting free. Wait a minute. Was there a timeout call? There was a timeout. I thought for a moment that we'd have Henderson coming up here to shoot, but a timeout had been called. It's a 30. Good penetration. Bradley able to get into the paint at will. Force the help defense. Good give up. Just a little bunny. May have gotten a piece of it. You know, this has been like an NCAA doubleheader here tonight. Great environment. No. You can't simulate these conditions in a practice. No. That's what makes these early season tournaments so valuable to your team and their learning curve as you go through the season. It gives you a reference point. Also things to go back on and work in practice. That tip on the Arkansas-Connecticut game has been moved, I understand, to about 11.42 Eastern time. So, uh, obviously, if we get this one done here in regulation, we'll, we'll get you on over there to Maui. EA Sports Maui Invitational continues. We wrap this one in Sims. The leading scorer for Kentucky, the J.C. transfer, fouled out of the game. 26 seconds to go. Hawkeyes have the basketball. Up by one. You would think a quick foul. They put it back in Horner's hands, and Moss is on him. So he'll come up and shoot. 25 seconds to go. So just like Coach Lavin said so often in, uh, in basketball, at every level, really, it comes down to the free throws. You see the Hawks, 70%, 12 points. Kentucky, 14 to 21. Coach? I think if Iowa is able to hold on and win this game, there's plenty of time. We're going to look back on the early timeout by Alford inside of five minutes. 
They come out of the timeout. They score on the two-man game with Bruner inside. They get another timeout on the N1 foul situation. Two long TV timeouts to rest his team so they were fresh down the stretch. Good clock management by Steve Alford. And out of that timeout, had his team well organized and able to dump the ball off to Bruner. This will change uh, the makeup of this game if he makes this free throw. Now Kentucky trails it by 3, 64, 61. They've got 24 seconds. Let's see if they can get Sparks. Somebody's got to get on Sparks. He's the key shooter. Remember that, number 22. Can they find him? Bradley went for it. Freeman knocks it away. And now hanging on is Henderson. And Rondo puts him on the line. I doubt that that's what they wanted in that situation. Sparks was over here on the right side for Tubby. They had to find a way to go inside, outside the Sparks go. We've seen down the stretch, a little too much dribbling, a little over dribbling. Maybe a little indecision here whether to go for the three or take it to the basket. I thought they had enough time with 25 seconds to try and get to the basket, get a foul or a bucket, and then get into your full court press again, and then you can foul using the clock, but maybe a little indecision. A big free throw coming up here. <laughs> the four is so different than the three. How many of us have sat through these agonizing moments of great basketball games and comes down right to that? Now they have to get two possessions out of 11 seconds. Henderson picks up Rondo. On the drive, Bruner right there with him tap. Perry goes to track it down. Final five seconds in underneath the Moss. We're 1.4 and the timeout called right after the uh, the make. So it's 65, 63, 1.4. And uh, basically the uh, the Hawkeyes offer just making sure where the ball is going to be when he gets it. Also making sure that his man can run the baseline. Obviously, you have to watch out for the fake charge and the five-second count. Wouldn't be surprised if they throw the ball the length of the court with a, to a receiver. There's still enough time to be able to catch and launch one from long distance. Give Coach Alford and his staff credit for clock management down the stretch, utilizing the timeouts and getting his team organized into that two-man game for that key basketball on the baseline by Bruno. Steve, remember last year the Maui? And uh, the Hawkeyes made a run, got all the way to the final, lost to North Carolina, the eventual national champion. Beat Texas in that run. So what we've got here tomorrow night, if they can uh, hang on here for this 1.4, is a rematch of that uh, Maui Classic game from a year ago, one of the earlier rounds. And, uh, Luska is fouled. Pushing foul, and uh, he'll come up now to shoot. Point nine, and uh, so it's going to be uh, what appears to be a, uh, a painful loss for Sims and uh, W. Smith and the, and the rest of the Wildcats. They came in tonight favored in this game. Well, they are still a work in progress. The staff's very open about that. There's still the issue with Randolph Morris. He can return to this team and take them to another level. But even if he doesn't come back, this is a very dangerous, young Wildcat team. A lot of combinations. No one's better at building a team. A couple years back, Tubby Smith went 0-2 in 2000, 2001 in the coaches versus Cancer. They ended up winning the Southeastern Conference and going on to a Sweet 16. So he will get better from this loss. So the Big Ten wrapping up one against the SEC here tonight. The Iowa Hawkeyes will be playing the Texas Longhorns for our championship. And Kentucky and West Virginia will meet in the consolation game. This would probably rank on Coach Alford's top six to eight wins during his run at Iowa. He's had some big ones in the Big Ten Conference tournament. 
some, some conference tournament wins, but this would have to rank right up there. You know, he did an excellent job of protecting Hanson. Remember the two quick fouls, bang on the bench, came in, got three, bang, he was back over there, and Hanson made a couple of key blocks, contributed a couple of big field goals for him. Uh, Bruner got saddled with four fouls. He sat him at the right time because he's not as deep as a lot of teams, so he's got to save uh, He's got to save his starters, but there is a veteran group, and uh, we've talked about this before with Steve, the way they, uh, the way they drew together uh, last year. So an, an impressive performance, but, but they got their hands full tomorrow night. Oh, absolutely. To come back, there's no day off. The NCAA right. tournament, you get 48 hours to turn around and get ready to play an opponent. On this one, you got to come right back. Heavy minutes for those starters, so that will be interesting to watch in tomorrow night's game because Texas is a deep team. Absolutely. But 10, 10 Eastern, and the offers, mom and dad, and the daughter, extremely happy. Kentucky will watch film, and they'll have to get better in late game situations, valuing the possessions, getting better looks at the basket. Buckeyes advance. It's Iowa and Texas. Sixty-seven, sixty-three is the final, and there's your matchup tomorrow. Ten Eastern on ESPN two, Texas and Iowa. Earlier on ESPNU, it'll be West Virginia against Kentucky in the consolation. And Bruner was uh, a key cog for the Hawkeyes here tonight. And that's uh, that's nice to see with the two teams uh, filing by each other on the other side. And uh, let's check in with Aaron. All right, Brent, thanks so much. I'm here with Coach Alfred. And Coach, you told me coming into the second half, they need to stop being so anxious, board play. But what do you think was the key for your team in the second? Well, I thought Mike Henderson was awfully good all night long. I just thought he really competed. You know, Jeff had an off night, yet he still found ways to win the game with free throws at the end. The big fella here was great. But it was our defense, and if we're going to win games against teams like this, we're going to have to guard, and I thought tonight we really defended. You mentioned to us yesterday what a fantastic fall you've had, that this is such a hungry team. What does this do for you, beating a club like Kentucky? Well, I hope it gives us some confidence. You know, unfortunately, in less than 24 hours, we got to play Texas. But uh, yeah, it's a great opportunity for us. We've been in the finals of this tournament before, back in 01, and finished second. So uh, it's early. It's only third week in November, but uh, this is a fun team to coach. And what do you have to say about this guy standing next to you over here, his play, Greg Brunner? Well, he's been a warrior for four years. I, I hate that I, I got him as a senior now because I'd like to have him for another four years. He just epitomizes the way we want to play and he was terrific tonight. Thank you coach and Greg we'll go over to you now. You had told us yesterday these seniors we wanted badly. What does this do to you beating Kentucky so early? I mean they're a tradition program. They're amazing. Uh, coach Tubby and Smith uh, I just can't even explain how, how good of a feeling it is to, to play with those guys and play, be on the same court as, with that tradition. And I was just amazed at the way they played and they're, they're great guys that played extremely hard and it's, it's just a great game. You seem very excited. Where does this win rain for you? I mean, it's on one top. I mean, hopefully we got a lot more coming up here soon. Thank you so much, guys. All right, Aaron, thank you very much. Bruner logged 33 minutes tonight, 17 points. And remember, he finished with the four fouls. The Hawkeyes win it. Connecticut and Arkansas are coming up from the EA Sports Maui Invitational. I'm Brent Musburger. Let's send it back to the studio. Here's the Davis gang and Coach Fran. Take it away, Reese. All right, Brent, looking forward to Iowa and Texas tomorrow night. But first, Rudy Gay. He's got to get flat out play. You'll see him go against Arkansas from the islands. Coming up. <laughs>